When the Burning Crusade Classic was first confirmed to go ahead by Blizzard, players had already been speculating for a long time as to the question of how is the transfer going to happen? Will we all be forced to move to TBC servers? Can we still play Classic? How is this going to work? We didn't have to wait long for an answer. We found out we'd be able to go back to Classic via Error Realms. These would be a separate version of Classic WoW on fully progressed servers with all the content out. Places where you could set up your boots on your fully geared Classic character to come back to at a later date. And though the inevitability of the expansion came and those who didn't opt into Error were moved forwards, Classic would still be there. Permanent, pristine and unchanged. If the urge to play came back in one week, one month or one year, it was going to be an option that was kept on the table. Remember when Blizzard said Classic would be a love letter to the community? Well this seemed like a nice step towards that commitment. After all, part of this whole Classic journey isn't just to replay expansions, but to have something that Blizzard themselves offer in an official capacity, a practical guarantee the server will stay up and will be around however long you are away. Classic is more than just its current expansion, it's each environments that led up to where we currently are. Different people do like different things and that power of choice is an impactful thing to leave in your players hands. So what went wrong here? Because if you are a TBC fan, right now you don't have a choice. Vanilla players get their game kept afloat, Wrath enjoyers are currently playing theirs. How is it that a key part of World of Warcraft's famous opening trilogy has been forgotten so fast. Why did Blizzard passingly mention in an interview there would be no error servers for TBC? Why was there next to no uproar? And why is it that seemingly no one cares about TBC error? Well, I'm going to have a go at answering that today. And I think you can approach this from about three separate points of view. You have Blizzard and how they saw classic error being received. You have kind of just the generic issues with error realms, which are worth a mention. And finally, problems that may stem from a player perspective. Let's start off from the approach of how Blizzard may have seen error. So, Classic Error dropped alongside TBC coming out, and it was unironically a complete ghost town for months. Despite being told again and again that people wanted to play vanilla forever, when it came to crunch time, it turns out the crowd was too busy in TBC, taking a break from WoW or doing whatever else. The impact on an MMO player base of the perception that the game isn't doing well really caves in on itself too. If you log into Orgrimmar at 6pm server time and you're the only person on your screen, you're just not gonna stick around for too long. Vanilla content really pushes you towards group with others, a raiding and PvE, the PvP, economy, not to mention there was the fiasco with the price of the character copy which Blizzard initially posted up at a smack in the face $35 before community backlash got them down to a mere 15 for an automated service. Classic. But imagine Blizzard reflecting on their promise to do Classic Era back then when it first came out. Character copy sales, not great, logins are a drop in the ocean compared to TBC, and there's literally about three dozen realms and ad wager less than 1k concurrent players at any time across any region. It just wasn't good. Were this any other MMO, it would have been taken offline. And honestly, it's fortunate Classic Era is still kicking around now and has lived to see a new breath of life, which will get onto in a moment. You might remember some of the surveys that Blizzard has sent out over the duration of Classic 2. Prior to advancing to TBC, it was already clear that error was going to be happening. Whereas the Wrath of the Lich King survey, yeah, they were all about Wrath. They didn't even mention any talk of TBC error at all. And there wasn't really a huge community buzz either about people wanting them as there had been for Vanilla. You have to imagine from Blizzard's point of view, after seeing how Classic error had been received, that it's best just to, well, put TBC behind us. Here's what was said about the possibility of TBC error during an interview. People want to experience certain errors of World of Warcraft in the progression style that is meaningful and Burning Crusade has done that. I think there are opportunities in the future to look at different seasonal content we can provide to keep people who are looking to revisit BC or revisit Classic again. It's something we're always keeping an eye on and seeing what we could do. So yeah, TBC, job done. Demand not there, no point creating another set of fuss about character copies or the hassle of a new section on the Battle.net launcher. 
The people want wrath, give them wrath, and that's that. And up to a few months ago, it's been pretty hard to argue with this. Despite how classic era was initially though, it's taken time, but over the past few months, people are gradually returning to it, leveling new characters, doing the hardcore challenge, raiding, PvP, and so on. As it turns out, you need a big old chunk of time between having just finished an expansion and any real desire for a decent number of players to want to go back. And having never committed to keeping TBC servers, well, this curiosity to go back to TBC cannot currently be offered by Blizzard. Maybe the recent resurgence of Classic Era should be a bit of a learning point. Maybe the demand isn't there now, but it will be eventually. Because if and when Blizzard decide to offer Error servers for any expansion, Error has kind of generic problems. The format of an MMORPG that never changes, I think is always going to be far more community driven by a niche, highly engaged group, rather than having a mass appeal to those who want to drop in to experience the new content and then come back when the next big patch drops. An MMO that doesn't have progression, simply put, isn't really much of an MMO anymore. It's kind of antithetical to the whole genre. MMORPGs are games which move forwards, have new content, tell new stories, bring out new features. Error Realms don't. They sit on the last phase with all the content they have to offer, from Atuman and Karazhan to Kill Jaden in the Sunwell. There is little incentive for character to progression too. Why go up through the gearing ladder when you can go straight to the last raid and get boosted? How do you even get into PvP with everybody in full season 4 gear and you're there in your welfare blues? The economy is messed up. Not enough people are farming, gathering, or crafting. Early on for Classic Era, some of the realms legitimately had no items on the auction house. I'm just saying jamming any gear you get might be a little bit problematic. And we've just talked about how Blizzard might view error servers, but it's also worth saying once you decide to host an error realm, it has to be a really hard decision to take it down. That is just saying it has failed, pure and simple. But if Classic Error can see new life after this long, why not TBC? After all, if the demand is there one day and a community movement gains motion, it should be possible, right? People one day may want to do some kind of challenge runs in TBC as they currently are in Classic. What about Project 60 or Project 70 that a bunch of streamers hosted pre-Classic launch too? What I'm saying is why not TBC? Well, I guess this is where we get down to the gameplay, the reasons a player may have for not wanting to go back, the classes, and just how TBC changed WoW as a whole. Maybe instead of asking why not TBC, we should be asking why TBC? Because I think it's quite a popular opinion that if you ask the majority of classic players to list their favourite to least favourite expansions from the opening trilogy, TBC is going to be at the bottom of that list quite a lot. In the fan server scene, this has been reflected dating well back before Classics launched too. Historically, there's been demand for vanilla, demand for wrath, and not as much demand for TBC. I think possible controversial opinion moments that vanilla is a great game before level cap, Wrath is a great game after level cap, and TBC doesn't quite excel at either. Don't get me wrong, it does a lot of things really well. It opens up new avenues of play for PvPers, different levels of challenges available from dungeon content, more content available for collectors and so on. But it was kind of like a middle ground between some of the scuffed of classic without the convenience of Wrath. More mounts and pets to collect, and no tab to store them. They added some damage onto healing gear so healers can go and do solo content better, but you don't have dual spec. They added loads of new talents and made more classes viable in PvE, so you can still press your one button rotation. There was a reduction in the effective size of the world too. Yes, Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor still exist, and Vanilla was the largest version of WoW ever, and it's just not even close. I realise there is a lot of nothing in Vanilla too. It's nowhere near as content dense as future expansions. You would even have gaps in leveling where you just run out of quests, but there's something in that which makes it more intriguing for me personally. Leveling is like a big puzzle to figure out what order to do things in, which quest should I go out of my way for the rewards, and so on. Quest hubs like Thorian Point in Searing Gorge or Gadgets and in Tanaris were a rarity and felt fun when you finally got a character to those points. I think the journey from starting to level cap loses something when it's just go from quest hub A to quest hub B 
and repeat. It's more linear and I think it's less of an interesting experience. This goes for Wrath too by the way, even more so than TBC with Blizzard's insistence of adding a ton of vehicle quests and items which have way longer cooldowns than they should. The value of gold also started to drop dramatically in TBC too. There were tons more items from quest rewards, the value of grey drops and cloth increased, there was daily quests, combined with far fewer consumables needed for raiding and you kind of just didn't really need to farm all that much anymore. Sure epic flying with training was around 6k gold total, that is not a small amount but it was a one time thing. For what it's worth I didn't think the classic meta of stacking so many consumables you could hit the buff cap was the best either but hey it made you have a reason to go and farm gold. These two points are why I think you often hear people saying there's nothing to do apart from raid or it's a raid log expansion when technically there is a lot more to do than just raid compared to vanilla. Vanilla didn't have dailies or arenas or as many optional reputations which actually gave you something tangible other than filling an exalted bar. Raiding wise the first clears were fun, trying to pull off challenge runs such as zero deaths or speed runs were good too and most of the content held up pretty well but again it had problems. I often hear people say later expansions, including Wrath, began to homogenize classes, but having your class identity being I suck at AoE really isn't much fun either. Mount Hydro Trash was either your whole screen is filled with numbers all the time, such as on Lock or Mage, or you could legitimately go AFK and nobody would notice, such as Hunter or Priest. I think it really highlighted why classes to some extent should be able to do things, albeit in unique ways. You could have something that's best at 2 target cleave or 3 target, sustained AoE, ramping AoE, burst AoE, that alone's 5 different ways to achieve AoE, not just adding an AoE button. Just give people something to press rather than their class feeling useless. I've touched on it already but TBC raiding still had one button rotations. I legit had to stop playing my lock halfway through TBC and ended up playing a rep pally for the remainder of it. I would take seal twisting over shadow bolting any day. A lot of people still had one button rotations too, in fact I think the majority of casters did. I remember getting on the Wrath beta and just running around on a template hunter character farming mobs for about an hour and thinking to myself, wow I've really just been pressing Shadow Bolt for this long. In TBC you also now brought a much better variety of specs than Classic with tons of utility picks being desirable for your raid, which is cool and all until you remember that everything was group wide. Totem of Wrath, Munkinora, Leader of the Pack, Heroism and Bloodlust, you name the buff, only your specific group got it. Optimal TBC raid comps were so inflexible, you had to set up the group in a certain way to tick all the boxes of this class needs this buff. Not having a group with a shaman was frankly a miserable experience. Each of their specs provided an unreal amount of buffs and you always wanted at least five in your raiding team at all times and so did every single other guild making the demand for this class unrelenting oh and before i forget playing anything with melee without wind fury was just awful for me on my rep pally it was about 30 percent of my damage that moment when you sign up for a 10 man you join and you realize they don't have a shaman was just pain. No one else I wasn't a fan of personally, threat mattering as much as it did. So I played a warlock and a rep pally, which is like hand picking the specs who if they get lucky at the start of a fight will guaranteed pull threat, unless the tank also got lucky during the opener. Having to stop when you get a good pull as DPS just isn't really fun. I don't know if you've tried Vezak's hard mode in Ordoir, but basically the casters get a huge buff and have to burn down this ad fast before it wipes the raid. If you get a good chain of crits on this fight, you are going to rip threat off the tank every single time and possibly even wipe the raid. TBC wasn't that shaky with threat but it kind of gives you an idea of what could happen. There was also a lack of threat transfers too then. Misdirection was on a 2 minute cooldown, in Wrath it's 30 seconds and rogues didn't have tricks of the trade either. On top of that tanks in TBC just had fewer threat generating tools in general. I think fights nowadays such as Algalon or perhaps Mimir on hard mode highlight how tanks can make a big impact through coordinating cooldowns, taunting and boss positioning rather than just running in and hoping that Mangle crits. I often read too that people didn't like attunements. I think they were pretty fun actually, I enjoyed them, but shouldn't have been forced to complete on every single character. It was like having to regrind content in Legion or BFA that your main had already done in order to catch up. Look at Dragonflight now which is so much more alt friendly and how well that's been received. Perhaps some kind of account wide key would have been decent to add at an earlier stage, though I do think removing attunements eventually has to 
happen or making them way easier to do. Otherwise, it's a barrier to entry through content, which is not going to be as popular as it used to be for latecomers to the expansion. You don't really want to do that either. Arena was nice for PvPers too and gave them some more variety, but then again, we are always on the last patch in Classic. This means we get a static, unchanging meta where overpowered remains overpowered forever, and people get comp fatigue after facing RMP or Rogue Druid number 10 of the evening. Whilst vanilla ranking was a fiesta and the balance was also not good at all, the alchemy and engineering consumes meta provided a way for most people to outplay someone else. I think those are the main points for me at least from a player perspective. These will definitely be different for everyone, but hopefully you can at least see where I'm coming from here. All in all, being honest, if TBC error was a thing right now, would I be playing it? No. But that is fine. Me not wanting something doesn't mean it can't exist for others. MMORPGs are notoriously difficult to make because of this. They are, by design, supposed to offer different things for different wants and needs. You never know when or why people will want to go back to an older version of World of Warcraft. And the fact that Blizzard are not offering that is a shame. After all, isn't keeping different versions of World of Warcraft alive what Classic was all about? What do you think? Should TBC era get served? one day and will people be looking back and thinking to themselves in a few months time or maybe a few years time that they could go for another journey throughout Outland? Let me know below. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening in. I'll see you all in the next one very soon.